on Sunday, in fact, to find out the full story. So what do you think happened to her? I think she's um, been attacked by uh, another bird, another predator. She hasn't been killed outright, but she's succumbed to her injuries a few days later. And when I picked her up, you could see a small scar, more of an incision almost, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. just at the back of her neck, right there. Oh, yeah. That's a classic peregrine wound, isn't it, with, yeah. the, with the rear claw coming in? She yeah. was obviously just getting out of the way on the hit. Yeah. But then didn't quite make it, didn't unfortunately. Quite. Do you know this bird? I do, yeah. It's, it's, it's a female from one of the most productive pairs. Oh, you're kidding. Um, yeah, unfortunately. How long have they been together, this pair? They first bred in this nest site um, in 2001, and they produce young, young every year. Uh, and last year they fledged four young, which is the most they've ever fledged. And um, currently, um, this pair were, before she died, were, were feeding young. What a tragedy. At the moment, the lonely male has, has taken food into the young. He's just getting on with it. So that's a good sign, but whether he'll be able to fly to chicks or not, on the time will tell. So can you see it from here? Just that, that cave there and right in the, in the foreground of the, the goats shelter. Right OK. So with, that, with any luck, the male should be flying back in to feed the young. There he is. Oh, yes, yes, yes. See him? Yeah. Flying into Hold the left on. there. He's still at it. Yeah. Good man. And in he goes. Good man. Oh, you can hear, you can, you can I can hear the chicks. Yeah, calling, yeah, yeah. Do you know, it makes it all the more poignant seeing him going in there alone because every time I've seen Chuffs going to the nest, it's always the pair that That's come in right, together. Yeah. They're such a close bond, and to see this guy trying to raise the kids single handed is quite something. At this stage, his sole objective is to feed those chicks, yeah. you know? So is this rain going to make it good or bad for him? Just um, well, actually, I think this rain we've had in the last couple of days is going to be really good for the chuff, and not just here, but for on the rest of the island, because it's been so dry in April and May um, that they've probably been searching around trying to find ground that wasn't you know, baked hard. So I think this will be good. It'll soften up the ground and probably make feeding a bit easier for them. It does mean that he stands a fighting chance of raising a family. Now, we did stay there for the rest of the day watching the antics at the nest, and um, I have to say what happened next was even more remarkable. I don't have time to tell you all about it right now, but suffice it to say it put even more pressure on that lone male to continue raising his family. I'm going to be back tomorrow when I'll reveal all and uh, also have a catch-up with our hen harriers, hopefully our golden eagles and everything else. Now back down to Bill and Kate in Devon. Thank well, you, Simon. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, if there's a theme that's come out of this one, Kate, it's the perilous life of young birds and their parents. So let's let's finish with, uh, we haven't got much time, but an image of perfect family bliss. There they are. Let's have a look at the front shot of those. There oh, you go. Look at them. There are like swallows doing looking well. like doing an absolute well. model family, which is yeah. fantastic. And, you know, talking about families, one of the things I'm really loving about this year's Spring Watch is that it, <laughs> it exists in... <coughs> swallowing flies, so see, it exists in different forms for different age groups, you know, so you've got early morning and on their own channel, you've got CBBs, which is terrific, you've been on it, I've been on it, yeah. you've got the, the pre-teens, they've got CBC, 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 CBC that one. That'll be on at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and you can keep up with all our characters on the webcam, yeah. bbc.co.uk slash springwatch, what else have we got coming tomorrow? Tomorrow, inevitably, Fox Diary continues, it where's does. he going with that chunk of meat? 
Indeed, and the life of the humble bumblebee. And we'll find out more about that. And we're, okay, will your single mum barn owl survive? Oh, and I do is hope this a, so. is this a recipe for the birds or is it for us? <laughs> no, I'm having it. You say goodbye, Kate. <laughs> well, I'll be looking out for my barn owl. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If Phil survives that lot, he'll see you too. It's see you what? at eight. Bye bye. Shall I tell you about my life? You say I'm a man of the world. I guess I've got everything I need. I wouldn't ask for And there's no one I'd rather be. Richard Evans here with the Radio Wales phone in 4x4s. Are they a nuisance or a necessity here in Wales? That's the question. In Newsnight, they call him Goldfinger. Can the world's richest nation stop this vulture from preying on the world's poor? Tonight, we have a special report on the attempts at G8 to stop vulture funds taking billions from developing countries. Newsnight, 10.30, BBC Two. And the mighty warrior raised his trusty sword to slay the evil robot when... Come on, it's late. I'll finish it off tomorrow. Oh. Stories make the world magical. To improve your reading and writing skills, call 0800 0150 950 for a free pack. Stephen Fry invites Joe Brand to discuss the dubious delights of domesticity in an hour in QI. First on BBC Two Wales, Andrew Marr asks how a decade of 60s optimism soon turned sour in the 70s. As